everybody, I'm Deanna, and we're getting ready to kick off our fourth Periscope segment for the day. Right now, I'm at the SOS Services Laboratory in Peoria, Illinois, and this is where our team of experts does fluid analysis, and fluid analysis can really help you reduce your overall operating costs. Here with me is Dana. She's a project engineer within the lab, and she's going to give you a peek behind the curtain so you can see what fluid analysis is all about. It's Great. all yours. Thanks, Deanna, and thanks for joining me today for the CAT SOS Services segment. Today I'd like to tell you a little bit about our fluid analysis business. Caterpillar has actually been in the business of fluid analysis for over 50 years. So within that time frame, Caterpillar and our vast dealer network has done over 8 million samples. Okay, and they're doing 8 million samples a year right now. So that's a million, millions of samples over the last 50 years. So thank you for, again for joining me today. So it's really important to understand that there are several keys and pieces of the cat fluid analysis business. The first one is the customer, and it's really important for you as a customer to help us out to help us evaluate your data correctly. The first thing you need to do is give us accurate information. So when you're sending a sample into us, it's really important that you're using clean sampling materials and taking a good fluid analysis sample. Other thing that you need to do for us is make sure that you're filling out the sample label appropriately. There's a lot of information on the sample label. The most important pieces being the hours, the fluid hours, the sample date, the fluid weight, and the brand, and also making sure that you're identifying to us if you're changing the fluid or the filters. So please do fill out your sample labels appropriately. So Caterpillar Fluid Analysis and our vast array of dealers across the globe analyze several different types of fluids. One of those fluid types is oils, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about those right now. For a fluid sample or for an oil sample, we're evaluating several things. One of those things is the parts per million of metals in that sample. We're looking for iron, we're looking for chrome, we're also looking for the presence of contaminants. One of those contaminants can be visual metal. And this sample and the lid here of this sample can give you an excellent idea of visual metal that's within that sample. I don't know if you can see this, but there is a lot of metal on that sample cap that by using a magnet, we can see that there's a lot of metal there visible in that sample. In addition to metal contaminants inside of that sample, we're looking for other contamination like fuel, like coolant, like dirt contamination, and also water contamination. So here's another great example for you of a sample that looks like a milkshake because it has excessive water contamination. So there's been a lot of water getting into that component and the oil is almost primarily water. In addition to the oil fluid analysis, we're also looking at things like coolant. Coolant fuel analysis is very important and has been with the advent of new technologies such as the emission strategies for tier 4 and other tiers and stages within the globe. So because of those emission strategies, we're finding a lot more of taxing on our cooling systems. So they're responsible for removing heat from a lot more metal than they ever did before. Some of the analysis that we're doing on coolant is very similar to what we did on oils. We're looking for the presence of corrosion metals. We're looking for whether or not those coolants are contaminated. And we're looking for the color and even the smell of the coolant to make sure that it's the appropriate smell and making sure that it's not contaminated. So here's some great examples that I've put together for you. This coolant sample has a very large layer of oil contamination. Clearly if you have coolant and oil in your cooling system, it's not going to transfer heat appropriately. So a sample that comes in like this is going to get a significant concern or it's going to get a, a high of alert level because of that particular con contaminant. Another good example is a cooling sample that looks like this. Yes folks, this really is a coolant sample that came out of a heavy equipment, uh, heavy piece of equipment. So obviously if you've got a lot of material and a lot of garbage within your cooling system, you're not going to be able to transfer heat well and you're probably going to end up with a lot of corrosion within that cooling system. And there's several other examples as well. Now the instruments behind us that are working right now, those instruments are analyzing for pH and conductivity and for the refractive index. So it's really important that we know the percentage of glycol that's in those cooling samples as well as if their pH is too low or too high. 
that can really add to corrosive nature within the cooling system and that's not going to help your heavy equipment piece run very effectively. The final, the final uh, solution that I'd like to talk to you about is fuel. So diesel fuel analysis is also analyzed by your Caterpillar laboratories. Diesel fuel analysis is very important, that especially on the sample tanks, or excuse me, the, the fuel tanks. So we want to make sure that you're sampling your fuel tanks, your storage tanks, at least once every quarter. So that's very important to make sure that you're getting good quality fuel samples and getting good quality fuel within your systems. So here are some examples of contaminated fuel that obviously are not going to give you great response in your abrasive equipment. So this fuel sample, though it kind of looks very similar to that coolant sample we just had, this is diesel fuel and it has a high level of contamination within that system. So obviously putting something like this in your heavy piece of equipment is not going to make it run very smoothly. Another example is a fuel sample with water. So here's a, a large layer of water on the bottom of that fuel. So we don't want to have that much contamination in the fuel because that allows for bacteria and fungus to grow. And as a result, you end up with very cloudy fuel that has fungus growing on the bottom and there's some bacteria in the middle as well. So we really want to avoid any of those contaminants within your fuel system. So once we get through folks looking at all the data that is available and analyzed within the laboratory, the final report is generated. And here's an example of what some of that information would be on a few, on an oil analysis report. We're going to tell you, the customer, all of your sample results, but we're also going to take our knowledgeable team of interpretation staff and making sure that they're using all of that information to generate valuable recommendations on how to lower your owning and operating costs and minimize your unscheduled downtime and monitor the health of your equipment. Fluid analysis is a very important part of very important part of EM solutions and concision monitoring. This, uh, this particular sample is an example of the sample from my truck. <laughs> so that's what you're seeing on this report. Because not only do I like to talk about fluid analysis, I also do it on my own pieces of equipment at home. <laughs> all right, that's all I really have to tell you today about fluid analysis. I thank you so much for joining me. Hey, I'm Deanna, and I'm still in the SOS Services Laboratory. Hopefully you were lucky enough to hang out with us a few minutes ago when Dana gave us all a peek behind the scenes as to what goes on back here and how fluid analysis really works. Dana, we got a ton of great questions in through the Periscope chat option. Um, how many fluid samples come through here a year typically? Okay, well from the total dealer and Caterpillar network, we have over 8 million samples a year. So that's a lot of sample bottles and a lot of data that we're generating, but again, that's that's across the globe. And how do I get started with the fluid sampling process? Well, you definitely need to visit your cat local dealer because they're going to have kits available for you. So visit their parts counter and they'll be able to get you started on sampling right away. So if I was a customer and my machine seemed to be running okay, why would I want to get started with fluid analysis? That's a great question and we get it a lot. So as just like a blood sample, it's really important to generate that baseline of how your equipment is wearing normally. So there's a little bit of wear in every compartment, but it needs to be normal. Once those samples turn to abnormal, without that historical data and without that routine sampling behind it, it's very difficult for us to determine when the normal becomes abnormal. So it's really important that you follow your operations maintenance manual and any of your manufacturer specifications to make sure that you're sampling routinely so that we build that great history. For me, it was really interesting to hear about the different types of contaminants that can get into your yeah. fluids. But how does that contamination actually get there, or what are the root causes behind that? Sure. There's a lot of different ways that you can get ingress of material into your system. So a lot of the components will have breathers on them, they will have clamps, they will have seals. All of those things can have damage to them or can fail. When you have a failure point, it's going to allow material that is not supposed to be there to get into your system. So it's really important that you have all of those in tip-top shape. How many labs does CAT have? 
So Caterpillar Corporate has six facilities and then we have a myriad of different laboratories throughout our dealer network across the globe. Okay. And why would you say overall SOS is so important to the equi equipment management? SOS is critical to equipment management and it's really important that you're doing fluid analysis, again, not only for your routine sampling, but by knowing ahead of time if something is taking place within your component, it really allows you to minimize that unscheduled or unplanned downtime and also going to help lower your owning and operating costs as a result. Now I'm sure we have a customer sitting out there somewhere that's thinking, I have a mixed fleet, I don't just have cat equipment can you help me we sure can so any type of equipment any heavy equipment whatsoever that has an oil lubricated compartment most likely your caterpillar dealer can service it so irregardless of the color of the iron I bet we can help so what sounds to me like if you've got questions on SOS and fluid analysis the first step is to contact your local cat absolutely dealer. go to your cat dealer okay thanks a lot guys for joining <laughs> us I hope you found that as interesting as I did um, tune in at 3 p.m. we're gonna go back out to Edwards and we're gonna work with the cat inspect app so get your iPhone and your Android ready download the app and Jeff is our expert he's gonna take us for a walk through it it's gonna be really cool we'll see you then